Last year, I made a couple of raised planter boxes so we could have a vegetable garden in our backyard. And while I was making those planter boxes, I also made an irrigation system built out of PVC pipe. Now, while that system worked pretty well, it did have a couple of challenges. So before we start planning things again this year, I wanna make some upgrades to that system so it's even better. Now, if you're looking for an irrigation system to work with my planter box plans, then this will work perfectly as is. You won't have to make any changes or modifications to the measurements. But if you're looking to make this work with another planter box, then just know you'll have to make some changes to the lengths of your irrigation sticks. I recommend measuring inside of your planter boxes to see what that measurement is and then make adjustments to match. Now, if you end up making this, I'd love to know about it. So be sure to leave me a comment below and then let me know if you stuck with my design or if you made any changes to the design and what those changes are. I'd love to hear from you and I might even make an updated video on this in the future. The nice thing about this system is it's really simple and really easy to make. You just need some half inch PVC pipe and some adapters. Specifically, you'll need two 10 foot sections of half inch PVC pipe. You'll also need one half inch PVC T, two half inch PVC socket caps for the ends of the irrigation sticks, three half inch female threaded drip irrigation adapters, two half inch male threaded drip irrigation adapters, and also some clear PVC primer and some clear PVC cement. I'll have the full shopping list here, so feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot if you'd like so you'll know exactly what you need to buy at the store. First, you'll need to cut your PVC pipe down into two sections. You'll need two five and a half foot sections for the irrigation sticks. You'll also need two three inch sections and a five inch section for the distribution tee. To cut the PVC pipe, you can either use a saw or I like to use these PVC cutters to make a quick clean cut. Next for the irrigation sticks, you'll make marks every one to two inches for the drip holes and we'll be using a 1 16th inch drill bit in order to make those holes. Next for the irrigation sticks, we'll need to take the PVC primer and clean both ends of the sticks as well as the adapters. If I had to build these again, I would instead choose to glue up the female adapters to the stick instead of the male, and you'll see why that is here in a minute. Once you have everything primed, then it's time to start gluing everything up. Make sure you have your parts all together and you can assemble them quickly because the cement will start to adhere very, very fast once you put the parts together, be sure to hold pressure on the parts for about 30 seconds before you release it. So we need to have this pipe for in between the connector and the T, so that way we can make the connections, because these won't go in by itself. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So I know though for my box, we want it to be nine inches. We're gonna want it to space out about like that. We're gonna do about three inch pipes on each side. So I'm gonna be about here. So we want it to be at least nine, so two three inch pieces and then a five inch piece is what we were doing for these boxes. For the distribution tee, the process is the same. Make sure to prime all of your connections and the pipes before you get started with cementing everything up. So here I have everything laid out. I'm priming all the ends of my pipes and I'm priming inside of all the adapters. What the primer is going to do is it's gonna make sure that that cement has a nice surface to adhere to and there isn't any dirt or debris that's going to get in the way of making a solid connection. Once you're done priming all the joints, then you can move on to gluing up all the different connections. Just be sure to focus on one connection at a time so the cement doesn't harden on a section of pipe before you're ready to work with it. Now, since I have two boxes, I wanted to be sure to water both boxes at the same time. And I also wanted to make it flexible enough to where I could water only one box at a time if I needed to. Now, unfortunately, because I put this system together in a hurry because we were getting ready to go on a long vacation, I didn't build it right. So what I ended up doing was on the tee that splits the water into two different paths, I accidentally glued up all three of the female ends to that T, whereas I should have just glued the one female end to the T that had the longest side so I could hook it up to the water hose. And then the other two sides were supposed to be the male ends. That way I would be able to just hook up one stick at a time and not have to worry about splitting the water and watering another box if there weren't plants in two of the boxes, for example. So instead of doing it all over again, I'm gonna glue up these half inch ball valves onto each of the sticks, so that way I can control which side gets water, or I can even adjust the pressure if I have one box that I want to not have as much water as the other one. So it's gonna give me a lot more flexibility, and that's basically the change that I'm gonna to make to this design. For this first ball valve, I'm kind of eyeballing it here to get a distance. Now I ended up measuring it exactly on the next one because this one ended up being a little bit too far away especially to cover up that first hole in the pipe. So while this first cut is about an inch away from the fitting, the next one I shrink down to seven eighths of an inch. Holes are always gonna stick out to the side. Um, I'm gonna put this shutoff valve at the top so that way this will be on top as this sits in the box. Now I can always rotate this down and it won't interfere 
uh, with the operation of this quarter turn valve as well. Uh, but if I rotated it to where it was like back or up or something like that, then this would obviously hit the box and we don't wanna do that. So again, it's the same process as before to install the ball valve. You wanna be sure to prime both the PVC pipe and the inside of the connections as well. And then use PVC cement to glue everything up. Again, be sure to hold everything in place for at least 30 seconds before letting go. In my case, I let go at around 30 seconds, but unfortunately the pipe pushed out just a little beyond that first hole in the pipe. Now, fortunately it's not gonna to cause too much of an issue for me, but that is something that you need to be aware of. And you'll need to repeat this entire process for the other irrigation stick as well. If we were to glue it up this way, since this is gonna be on the opposite side, then this valve would be at the bottom and we don't want that. We want this to, valve to still be at the top. So we're gonna glue this one on upside down so that way it will work out in the end in these boxes. So since this is gonna be on this side of the T, we wanna make sure to glue this on this way. So effectively this would be at the bottom compared to that stick. So let's take this off and we'll glue it up. Hold it for 30 seconds. Now alternatively, I could have taken another male end and some spare half inch pipe along with the cap to make something that I could screw into the T to prevent the water from going into the other side. But I figured the half inch ball valve is gonna be the better option in this case. So like I said, I ended up building this irrigation system because we were going on vacation. And in order to manage the water turning on and off, I was either gonna to have to leverage a neighbor or a family member or use one of those uh, water timers that you see on faucets. But those things can be pretty clunky. So instead, I ended up getting this thing from Orbit. This is their Beehive line. And this is a smart Wi-Fi hose faucet timer. And basically this will let you do everything that a regular timer will do uh, and then some. So you can control your faucet from anywhere in the world. You can set up watering schedules. Um, it'll make adjustments if the temperature drops below freezing or if there's rain in the area and it doesn't need to water it anymore because it had enough rain. Um, so this thing is really cool. So if you're looking to upgrade your existing irrigation system or if you're looking to build this and you want some way to control your water supply automatically, then I would check this out because in my case, uh, it's done a really good job. All right, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and also check out this other video next. I'm sure you'll like it too. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.